Hey everyone, thanks for coming. Um, my name is Evan Weber. I'm with an agency called Experience Advertising. Um, thank you so much for attending my presentation. Um, I've been in the digital marketing space for over 15 years, so I'm definitely old school with this. So I have a lot of background, a lot of experience. I've been on the merchant side, I've been on the affiliate side, I've on the agency side, and so I've pretty much covered all sides of e-commerce and uh, digital marketing. My agency um, manages all types of media. We search, social, affiliate, conversion optimization, e-commerce, things of that nature. So I'm going to try to touch on many different things um, in the digital marketing realm. So hopefully some of it you know, you'll vibe with it, and um, if anything is unclear after I'm done, then we can um, have a Q&A at the end, save some time for that. So, you know, I'm, I'm gonna jump jump right in. Um, there, these presentation notes I put together, there's a few more copies up here, but um, essentially it's, there's some, you know, just bullet points on what I'm, what I'm gonna be talking about. So you can follow along a little bit easier. Um, so, you know, digital marketing is a very diverse industry. Um, it's it's a great industry. It's an amazing industry, and it's it's a place where you can you know have your own company. You can work for companies doing a multitude of things. Um, you can be a search engine manager. You can be a social media manager, an affiliate manager, a publisher manager. Um, you can own your own sites, own your own offers, be an affiliate, do it all at the same time. Um, I believe in a comprehensive approach to whatever it may be, whether you have your own sites or you work for a company, you know, you need a comprehensive digital marketing and social media approach to whatever, whatever you're pushing out there or marketing on the internet. So, you know, these are, these are some of the main channels in digital marketing. Um, obviously some very familiar paid search, organic search, website conversion, optimization, email marketing, social, shopping engines, retargeting, affiliate marketing, referrals, retention, and, and mobile. And there's more. These are, you know, some of the most important in my opinion. Um, but these are some of the diverse channels that each need their own strategy, no matter what you're doing. Um, whether, and, and a lot of, the, there's a lot of crossover. If you work at a company and you're in charge of you know, email marketing, that might have, you know, bleed over into search or social, and they sort of all need a, a coherent strategy where everything is promoting the same offers and the same discounts and kind of um, all having a comprehensive strategy. So let's go into the first slide. Um, so, you know, search is still the number one source of targeted traffic on the internet. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Most companies get the majority of their customer acquisition from search. So, um, you know, what this chart shows, it, it's kind of cool. Um, you know, a lot of companies ride off their organic rankings if they have good organic rankings, but paid search actually converts better than organic search. And, and there's been studies that prove this out. Uh, but when you run, even under your company name, um, if you're you know, running a Google AdWords account or Bing Ads account, and you have great organic rankings on your company name, throwing a paid search, a paid um, sponsored ad up at the very top is gonna get you more click-throughs and revenue, actually, than just riding off your organic rankings. So, um, you know, in this day and age, you need, to, you need to have great organic rankings and you need to do paid search as well to get the most traffic for whatever your, you know, your company name or whatever your core keyword phrases are. Um, so, you know, some other, important aspects um, you know Bing ads is you know I call it low-hanging fruit I don't, I don't know if that's the right term for it but um, a lot of companies put 90 some odd percent of their their search spend into Google AdWords because that's where the traffic is um, but Bing and Yahoo also have you know even if it's 15 or 20 percent of the search traffic out there you know you can get keyword phrases at a fifth or a tenth of the cost of what you'll pay on Google AdWords. So even if you run an affiliate site, let's say you have a pet, a pet site um, or a pet blog, you know you can buy keywords like pet coupons, pet food coupons, and bring them to a page on your website um, from the keyword you know searches on Bing Ads to a page of pet coupons from Petco and 
Pet, whatever, and Pet Smart. And so, you know, there's a lot of upside for affiliate marketers and merchants to leverage Bing ads to get targeted keyword traffic. It's just a very neglected platform, in my opinion, right now. And it has been for a couple of years. Like I said, most companies are spending so much on Google that they don't have any budget left for Bing ads. Um, and you can get a really good ROI on Bing ads because the cost is, is a lot less. Um, you know, other, other important topics that are, that are in the handout um, down here. You know, things like running pr promotions and discounts in your, in your paid ads, um, that's good. Having corresponding ads and landing pages to certain keyword phrase sets is important. Um, using site links where you can actually put inner pages of your site in your Google ads and Bing ads. Um, which link to like sub pages of your site like about us or shipping policy or you know coupons page whatever the case may be it'll take up more real estate on the page for every ad you're running in Google and Bing so definitely and you know I've been running paid search for over 10 years um, probably since day one and um, you know being number one is the goal and being there all the time is the goal and it's kind of like a goal you can never attain because there's just so much cost involved. Um, but if you convert it really well, then you can afford to be there. And you just have to out-convert your competitors. You have to outperform your competitors with your website by boosting conversion rate. Um, you know, I linked to a tool called Optimizely here. Um, it's a really awesome tool. I'll just, I'll just show you real quick. Um, this is a site where you can, you can put in your website URL and then literally run an A-B test on your website layout. Um, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but um, running A-B testing on your website, if you're buying traffic, is an absolute must. If you're not doing that, you're, you're totally missing the boat. Um, the companies that spend the most online are A-B testing their landing pages, the main graphic, the um, you know, bullet points, the header, all, all the logo, the start now button, all that stuff needs to be split tested with other things that are similar. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so let's mosey on to some SEO tips. Um, you know, SEO is, is one of those things that you hear a lot of misconceptions about, in my opinion. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, this is, this is a survey of, of marketers. You know, quality content always rules the day with SEO. Over time, Google will weed out the crap, and they have. And all these updates you hear about, Penguin, Panda, yada, yada. I don't pay much attention to them because all my sites are 100% unique. And, you know, I barrage them with unique content on an ongoing basis. So I never have to worry about dipping or whatever in these um, algorithm fluctuations. The, the, you know, the search results are going to fluctuate over time. One day you'll be number one. The next day you'll be number eight. You know, it'll drive you crazy if you, you know, obsess over it. But um, if, you, if you have a really strong content strategy, um, creating articles, blog posts, content, you know, webinars, things like that, videos. Um, and some of the, the tips here, um, let me go down. You know, become, you know, write profusely, retarget your art, retarget your content. A lot of companies don't, you know, they put up articles and blog posts, but they don't have the retargeting cookie on there. So, you know, you want those pages to work for you. Back in the day, you know, when, when companies would put content on their website or articles, it was a great strategy to boost traffic, but the people would come, they would read it, and they'd leave, and they wouldn't buy from the website. Now you, now you can cookie all those visitors with a retargeting service, and, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but you can really maximize the articles and blog posts on your site by cookieing all those visitors, and then when they leave the site, you can advertise to them on the web and on Facebook. And Twitter. So that's a powerful way to make your articles and blog strategy work and sink in a little better and convert better over time. Um, you know, LinkedIn has, you know, everyone should be applying to, to publish on LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is, is a amazingly well ranking website. Um, you know, since I started publishing on there, actually, I can show you real quick. Um, this is my LinkedIn profile, bad picture, but whatever. Um, let's see. So these are, these are my articles on LinkedIn and, you know, I write, you know, stuff about what I do, what my agency does, tips for affiliates, tips for e-commerce, whatever. 
So all these articles, though, and it puts them in a nice, you know, organized fashion. But the, the, the bottom line is they just rank really well in Google, all of them. So if you were to search any of these articles, they'd come up number one in Google. Um, and it's just, it's just a great platform to publish content on and get rankings from. And then you can link them, you know, link the articles to your site. You know, obviously they see who, who wrote it and they go to your LinkedIn profile. You, they view your profile, then you can reach out to them and you'd make a connection and do a business development thing out of it. So, um, let's, let's mosey on. Um, so, you know, this website conversion optimization is, it's just, it's just never, your website is just never good enough, okay? That's something you have to just accept and, and, and bond with that concept. Um, this is a really simple A-B experiment where they just had some stuff on the side right here and they just kind of removed it down here. But what they saw with this, with this split test is that this converted like 10 times better than this just because they removed those three boxes on the right side and just you know, ran with a large graphic across the middle. And, and that's an example of just how simple a split test could be. Um, so using tools like Optimizely, Convert.com, there's a couple others. Um, you know, other important points, trust logos. It, you know, most, a lot of websites don't have enough trust logos and people surfing around looking to you know, stick their credit card into a website and buy something they want to feel warm and fuzzy about the online transaction. So you need, you know, you need trust logos, Norton's, BBB, Trusty, things like that. Obviously testimonials and, and customer reviews are hugely important. Um, Yotpo and Trustpilot are two of the uh, bigger, um, and they're cheap. They're a um, you know, hundred and something bucks a month for an e-commerce site. And it, it's an automated customer reviews widget that will email all your customers after they buy and ask them how they like the product and then take the review and publish it right on the website automatically and share it on your, your Facebook and Twitter account. So that's, um, if you're doing e-commerce, you need to be leveraging customer reviews. It's, it's a must. Um, you know, live chat. I'm a big advocate of live chat, even on an affiliate site. If you're getting a decent amount of traffic, you could have a little pop-up widget that says, hi, how can we help you? And it just brings a human element and you can interact with your visitors. Even on affiliate sites or blogs, you know, you get all this, anonymous traffic and you know you could be interacting with those people they could be asking you questions about you know this product or that or blog post you've written about and then say oh by the way Macy's is giving a 10% off coupon go to this page and, and, and click the link and you'll get a, a deal when you click through they don't know that's an affiliate link so you can you can leverage live chat to like guide people around your website and drop the cookie on them and if they make if they you know make a purchase you get your commission um, you know, things like pop-up email capture, that's a tried and true way to make your site stickier. Capturing email in exchange for a coupon code or access to special content or whatever. Um, but that's a way to build your email list. Just Uno is a really good service for that. It's dirt cheap, it's like nine bucks a month and you can use it on e-commerce or blogs. Um, you know, retargeting is another way to convert more of the visitors into customers, and that's just cooking all the visitors and then advertising to them when they leave the website. We'll get the, into that in a minute. Um, for e-commerce, shopping cart abandonment emails is extremely um, effective. Uh, this is where they, they start checking out and they abandon the shopping cart, but it, it cookie, it, it, you put a JavaScript on your website basically and It'll, it'll basically email them after they, if they start checking out, put a name, email, it'll email them their cart contents with a promotion sometimes, sometimes without, after the fact, if they don't convert. And so it's, it's a way of kind of like, a little creepy, but very effective. Um, and similarly, you can do like those exit chat pops. And these are, these are just different tools you can use on a website to convert your traffic more profoundly. The last thing you want is, you know, 99% of the people bouncing from your website and 1% buying. That'll drive anyone nuts. Um, so let's, let's get into email a little bit. Um, you know, email is still number one. I'm talking about, you know, in-house lists. I'm not talking about third-party email blasting, which is effective, as you know, um, in certain applications. I'm not a huge advocate of it 
on a mass level, but the right email lists, the right demographic, the right source, I'm all for. Mass mailing, I'm not exactly that enthused about over the years. It's still around, it's still viable. Some of you may utilize it. I'm not gonna hate on it or anything, but I don't put a lot of credence into it as a long-term strategy. But this, this more refers to your, your inner um, email list marketing, uh, marketing to your own list. So that's why it's important to have the email capture pop up on your website and you know, run sweepstakes where they have to enter their email to, to win, stuff like that, uh, to enter the sweepstakes. And so this, this is just, you know, for customer retention, email is still number one, no doubt about it. And it's not going anywhere. And, but these other areas like social media have you know, creeped up and referral marketing is, and these, these are, you know, once you have a customer, the goal is, the profit is in selling more stuff to them because there's no, there's no campaign cost. You, you spent, you know, $50 to acquire them or 30 or 20 or however much it was, or 100. And, and then when you have them, the key is to sell them more stuff in a targeted fashion, a personalized way. And that's where the upside, the profit margin is in a, a lot of companies. So these are just a couple, um, you know, e HTML email examples that I pulled from, um, you know, Nasty Gal and uh, Jack Threads. And, you know, as you can see, they're just, they're doing a great job of conveying the message. Um, and Nasty Gal and, and, you know, Jack Threads, these are, I sign up for a lot of just newsletters, you know, e-commerce company newsletter so I see what they're all sending and you know these are just a couple good even if you're you know an affiliate marketer and you have a list of a thousand people let's say you need a good layout a good HTML layout that you can send them offers or your content with some banners in the layout you, do, you need to invest in a, in a nice HTML email layout that you can send through eye contact or constant contact whatever the case may be and, and really just leverage email um, possibly more so than, than you have uh, let me, let me go here. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I touched on some of these things. Um, yeah, I list Archimax. They're, they're a third-party email bla you know, blasting service, CPM, and they do affiliate stuff too. And, and SendStream, um, or StreamSend actually, is, is a really cool fairly new tool where it'll take some of your blog content and create an automated newsletter that you can blast out. So, um, and, and, and blast it out on your social networks as well. So you should check. All these, all these tips and tools and things are available after the fact. You don't need to like hurriedly, you know, scribble them down or anything because I, I have links to the pages and, and you can have that later. One sec. Okay, so let me just check the time real quick. Okay. So let's talk about social media for a, a couple minutes. Um, you know, obviously social, me social media is the hottest thing on the planet. And, you know, you need to master it, um, in my opinion. I don't care what you do, who you work for, work for yourself, a company. There's, this is a, this is a ever-changing landscape. Every day there's something new. There's a new tool, there's a new strategy, there's a, a company buying a company. It's, it's just, it just couldn't be hotter. And, you know, so some of the things that I think are super important is, you know, learning how to manage a Facebook page and learning how to do Facebook advertising. There are many ways to do Facebook advertising. There are probably seven or eight different ways to advertise on Facebook. And you just need to familiarize yourself with with them, you could advertise for fans, you could get clicks to the site, you could advertise your previous customers, you could boost posts, you know, you could um, create lookalike audiences that look like your customers and advertise to those people. You know, Facebook's just going bananas with their advertising options. And the targeting is amazing. Um, you can actually boost a post on Facebook, on your, on your Facebook page, and then target your demographic or your, you know, people into affiliate marketing. I, I run ads on Facebook of people who attend Affiliate Summit, and they like my corporate page. You know, for some of my e-commerce stuff, I'll target people, you know, like I have a site that sells, like, security shutters. Um, I'll target people, you know, in, on, the, on the, you know, East Coast of the United States that are in hurricane zone. 
and just, just target those people. I mean, the targeting on Facebook is phenomenal. Again, you have to test these things. You have to, the nice thing about online advertising, and this has kind of always been the case, is you can put a really fixed budget on anything. If you want to spend $5 a day testing something, you can. If you want to spend $100 a day, you can. And you can let it run for a few days and see how many fans are acquired or how many clicks come to the site and then how many conversions come in and say, okay, I spent $50 and I made three sales. Great, it worked. Let's try to scale that. Um, so, you know, all these things need to be, whenever you advertise online, you need to test it on a small basis and then look to scale it. And, you know, doing things like running promotions and having a targeted landing page, those are things that are going to help convert the, the traffic. When you talk about, like, advertising for fans of the page, then that's kind of like a future customer acquisition play. If you spent, you know, a thousand this month advertising for fans and you got 2,000 fans, then you have to run promotions, boosted posts, and see how many of those fans convert into buyers. And then you can gauge your ROI on the uh, fan advertising. But um, I, I'm a pretty big advocate of fan advertising. If you have a, a Facebook page, you should always have a Facebook fan acquisition budget running, whether it's $5 a day or $50 a day. It, it'll just add fans to the page. You'll get excited about it. Those people you can interact with, and it's, it's a valuable, if you're going to spend money online driving you know, traffic or anything um, marketing your company, fan ads on Facebook, I highly recommend. Um, and then, you know, Twitter has rolled out a lot of good advertising options lately. Um, they've rolled out website cards, lead generation cards. This is where you can advertise in the Twitter feed and link to your website with a nice graphic. And it targets people that in your, in your demographic and, and by interest levels and, and demos. So, like, if you wanted to target people, you know, planning a wedding and you're a flower website, you could target people just talking about their wedding. And then your, your flower, you know, your florist ad will pop up in their newsfeed and a link to your site and you put the tracking link in there and you run the campaign and you see how many click throughs and sales result from it versus what you spent. And so that's, that's how you would test a, a Twitter campaign of that nature. Similarly, you can um, promote your account to build followers on Twitter. You can just advertise to gain more targeted followers that are in your niche. Um, like if you're wanted mommy bloggers, you could target mommy bloggers, you know, you could target um, people talking about, again, like weddings or gardening or whatever, and it, it only gets those people to follow you, and it charges you based on how many people engage with the ads. Um, promoted tweets, similarly, you can do a tweet and then promote it, and it'll only go to the people in your target demographic or your niche. Um, and Twit custom audiences is, is similar to, you know, Facebook custom audiences. You can upload your customer file or an email list and then just advertise to those people on Facebook and Twitter. It's an extremely effective way to convert more people into customers and build customer loyalty. And you know, Instagram is the hottest thing on the planet. I mean, you, you, if you're not using Instagram, you just need to force yourself onto that, that platform and just use it. For your company, you should have a, a, an Instagram for your company and you know, hashtagging your posts and that'll get followers. And Instagram, couldn't be hotter for driving traffic. One of my clients, she's a bathing suit designer. Um, she, she gets 90% of her customers from Instagram. She doesn't spend a penny on search. She doesn't do any of these other things. I, I, I've she does some of them, you know, she has good SEO on her website and some things, but you know, she gets 90% of her customers from Instagram just by posting pictures of girls in her bikinis and then hashtagging them um, and just building the following that way. And it, it, it works over time, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, you know, shopping, I, I put shopping comparison stuff on here because, you know, this is like an e-commerce play. This is where if you have a product catalog, you leverage these, these venues, Google Shopping, you know, Price Grabber. This is, this is only for e-commerce with, with a product catalog. So if, if you don't have that going on, then you can, you know, go to sleep right now. But, um, but if you do run e-commerce, this is, this is where you need to be. These are charts that show you where the most revenue comes from, these shopping engines, and then wh which shopping engines have the best conversion rate. So I just, I just kind of put it in there because a lot of e-commerce sites get a lot of their revenue from shopping engines. And this is where you pay them per click and people searching for products, it comes up you know, your price versus your competitors and you can get a lot of traffic from that through you know, the e-commerce vertical. Um, and 
I put some tips on here. Um, Wiser is a cool tool you need to check out, Terapeak. Um, Wiser is cool for e-commerce because um, it'll, it'll actually tell you what your competitors are selling their products for on the shopping engines. If you have like a widget for sale for $20, it'll go to all the shopping engines and say, you know, Target has it for 19 you know, so-and-so has it for this. And it'll, it'll allow you to like set your pricing on your website based on what your competitors are pricing their items at. So if you wanted to be one cent cheaper than Amazon or another retailer, you could set the tool to automatically tweak your website pricing so you're a penny cheaper than your competitors. So it's a really cool technology um, for e-commerce uh, that, that you need to check out if you, if you sell through e-commerce and have product catalog. Um, so let's, let's talk about retargeting because, you know, retargeting is the biggest thing in digital marketing for the last couple of years. Um, and this is where you're cooking your visitors and then advertising to them when they leave the website. Okay. You, you, di you didn't used to be able to do this. Um, before they used to come, they used to go, either they bought or they didn't. Um, if they subscribed, that was great. But now you can just drop cookie on all your visitors and and just advertise to the ones that didn't convert or advertise to the ones that did sell them more stuff through a separate campaign. I'll roll this little video. Um, this is a promotional video for Zendesk and AdRoll, um, but it's, it's, it's kind of cool. It's like a minute something long. Let's see if it... So Zendesk was founded about seven years ago out of Denmark. And it was built from the ground up to be beautifully simple. And, and that's always been one of the core differentiators of Zendesk. It's just a delight to use. It's beautifully simple software at its best. Before AdRoll, uh, we really didn't have any visibility into whether or not we were reaching the right audience on Facebook. So Zendesk is growing rapidly, not only locally, but internationally. In the US, we have great customers like Groupon, Box, and Adobe. We measure every single interaction with our prospects and customers. And we see that sometimes it literally takes 20 to 30 interactions before someone will eventually sign up to become a lead. And you need to have the back-end technology that's going to allow you to nurture that prospect all the way through. And so AdRoll has been absolutely critical for us. I decided to partner with AdRoll because I'd heard that they had a good reputation in the advertising and retargeting space. Uh, but more importantly, like anybody shopping for a product, I went to the website. And when I left, I immediately started getting retargeted and I saw the ads. In particular, I saw an ad on Facebook uh, with a guy pointing at me telling me that I had been retargeted. Targeted, and that was kind of the aha moment for me. I knew uh, exactly how this product worked and I, I could envision how it worked for us. What I love about Adderall is that my international teams can go in and build a campaign, be in French, Japanese, or Portuguese um, in a matter of minutes and customize creative or copy. We were able to see conversions coming in almost immediately. The other thing that I love about AdRoll is the support. We have some unique tracking needs. AdRoll made it really easy to meet us on our terms set up things the way that we wanted to track them and, uh, and made sure that we had visibility into the performance of our campaigns. Adderall has helped keep our brand top of mind to the right audience. Those additional impressions and influence on these social sites have resulted in not only leads, but qualified leads. And it's not about just getting them to a lead. That's not where the marketing stops, right? You want to continue to nurture them because there's expansion revenue, there's upgrades, there's different plans. And so retargeting with Adderall is just one of those key technologies that we could... Okay enough. Um, so basically the, the, the gist of this is, you know, what they use it for, this is, this is all about just cooking your visitors and just continuing to advertise them as they surf around the internet and on Facebook. And, and you can also do it on Twitter as well. Um, so, you know, this, this is the hottest thing in digital advertising. Um, you know, still, you know, Adderall has 15,000 customers, um, companies using the service, but there's still many companies. Like if you if you have a lead gen site, a, a landing page, or you have a, a CPA offer, let's just say, and you're driving traffic to it, and you're not cooking the people and then advertising to them when they leave, your, your conversion rate is, is just way down here. If you were, if you were implementing a strategy, the nice thing about this, this type of advertising also is the cost is very effect, it's very cost effective, it's very inexpensive. It'll only spend as, to correlate to how much traffic you're actually getting. So if let's say you have a, a landing page that's getting you know, 10,000 visitors a month, you might spend $100 on retargeting all of those people. And, and when they come to your website and they leave, they open up Facebook, blam, your ad's right there in the newsfeed. 
Um, and they go surfing around the web, they see your banners popping up on different websites everywhere. You may have seen this as you, you know, surf around the internet. And now that if you weren't familiar with a thing like this, you'll see it everywhere. All the biggest companies, you just go around to some e-commerce sites and you leave, you'll, then you'll start seeing their ads popping up everywhere and on, and on Facebook. So it's, it's a huge, huge upside for, you know, CPA offers, lead stuff that aren't, you know, using retargeting. It could really boost your conversion rate and the cost is, is almost negligible. And the uh, ROIs, they charge on a CPM basis, but it, it's a very low, it's like a $3 CPM. And again, these people have been to the website, so they're super targeted. And it converts really, really well in most instances. Um, little um, tidbits, um, let's see. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a service called Perfect Audience that um, you can actually cookie your email openers. Um, that's that's a new th a thing that they're doing that other other ones aren't. You can actually put a piece of code into your email HTML. And then when the people open the email, they get cookied. They don't even have to go to the website to get cookied. They just get cookied from the email open. And then they, they start surfing around, they see your banners and your Facebook ads popping up everywhere. So that's kind of, kind of cool um, and exciting. And I use it, I've used it myself. It, it works really well. I target a list of like, um, you know, directors of marketing for my agency. And, you know, the ones, they just open the email and immediately I'm retargeting them. They surf around the web and they start seeing my agency's ads popping up everywhere. So it's, it's kind of cool. And, and the cool thing is also it shows you how many people are cookied and like how much, and I spend maybe 20, 20 bucks a week on it. It's really cheap, but I'm everywhere. And if they've come to my site or they've opened my email, then they're seeing my ads when they surf around the, the web from now for the next six months. And it's just a very effective thing to do. Um, and it can also be a good customer loyalty and retention play because you can use retargeting to sell buyers more stuff. Um, and you can set up separate campaigns to just target buyers versus non-buyers. And that's, that's the way you, know, you, you do it. You, you target the people that didn't buy with a certain promotion and the ones that did buy, you try to sell more stuff. So let's move on, because time is getting short already. Um, oh, this isn't working now. Okay, there we go. Oh, I have to do it manual. So let's talk about affiliate marketing a little bit. Obviously, we all know about affiliate marketing. We're here, um, various levels of depth into the industry. Um, but this is a nice graphic that CJ put out. Um, CJ being one of the bigger affiliate networks that's been around for 15 years. Um, and you know, affiliate marketing, the beautiful thing about it is it's so diverse. There's so many different types of affiliate marketers and you know, there's bloggers, there's coupon sites, there's loyalty portals, there's um, you know, email list owners, there's probably 20 different subsets of affiliates. And I believe they're all, they all have efficacy and you need, you need more of all of those over time to grow a large productive affiliate program. But um, you know, this, this graphic, it's, it's a little convoluted. I mean, CJ put it out, so um, it, it's a little self-serving, but what it essentially demonstrates is that you know people think you know they have the idea then they start surfing around looking for deals and you know reading content and they might have a toolbar and they might be in the cashback portal and those are all different affiliate types that they could get exposed to within the purchase process and and not even know that they that those you know they're interacting with affiliates um, and then they come through and they convert and then there's a post conversion situation where they could get another offer on the landing page, be sold more stuff. If, the, if they purchase, an affiliate would benefit from that. And so there's some merit to this. Um, again, it's, it's a little, little self-serving, um, but it demonstrates the fact that, you know, affiliate marketing is, is more than just, I'm going looking for a coupon site, or I read a blog post, or I got an email. All that stuff kind of gets woven together over time. And if you run an affiliate program on multiple affiliate networks, you know that you, know, you can pay out the same, the same commission on, on you know, double commissions on the same sale, the same order. And the reason why is because people are getting an email, they're going to multiple coupon sites, they have a toolbar. They're interacting with many affiliates prior to purchase without even knowing it. 
And so, you, you know, the affiliate landscape has just exploded over the last five or 10 years. Um, you know, some of the points of emphasis with affiliate are, you know, leveraging the bigger networks. If you're a merchant, you should leverage the bigger networks because they have a preponderance of, of niche, niche affiliates um, that you can prospect. I'm, I'm a big proponent of in-house programs. I, I think it's, it's a good way to bond with your affiliates better and you build the relationship, you get their, their phone number, their address, you can call them, you can, you know, more so than an affiliate network that doesn't divulge that information. So an in-house program, and, I, and I'm a big advocate of, you know, blogger outreach, website. If you're looking to recruit affiliates, you should be reaching out and you should be contacting blogs and websites that might rank well in Google under things similar to what your website's about that you're selling and ask them if they want to be an affiliate. Um, and, and affiliate marketing at the end of the day is diversifying your traffic sources. Um, as, as a merchant or someone selling something online, you know, you have your, your search, your SEO, some email, but when you have a, a diverse affiliate program, basically you're, you have thousands of sources of traffic. Some may convert well, some may not convert at all, but at the end of the day, you have thousands of sources of traffic and over time that will result in more sales, no doubt about it. Um, you know, with your affiliates, you have to take care of them. You have to spoon feed them. You have to get them what they need. You have to be a good, a good affiliate manager, a good traffic, build the relationship. If you don't do those things, your affiliate program isn't going to prosper like it should. And if you do those things, it will. If you get on the phone, if you, you know, message them frequently in the right way, a lot of companies will, you know, treat their affiliates like, um, you know, here's our deals, promote them, thanks. Instead of saying, you know, we love it if you would promote these deals, they should do well for you. Let us know if you have any feedback. I'd love to get on the phone with you. That's publisher management, you know, as it should be done. But unfortunately, or fortunately for, for my agency, because that's what we do for companies, but um, a lot of publisher management, affiliate management, just isn't personal enough, in my opinion, and it needs to be personal to be really effective. Let me check the time real quick. Okay. I'm gonna go a little faster, I think. Um, so let's move on to to customer referrals. Um, you know, this is just all incremental revenue for a website that sells something. Um, this is leveraging your customers and your traffic to basically, it, it's like a stripped down form of affiliate marketing actually because they assign a referral link to your visitors or your customers and then they can share it on Facebook and Twitter or through email, add a little message click share and then it shares it on their profile and if they if the customer they refer buys they get a reward they get a $25 gift card $10 off their next purchase so this is and this this widget is by friend buy so this is living on you know dormify.com which is an e-commerce website and they're pushing this customer referral program and you know customer referral programs can be util utilized for many things they can be utilized, they can even be utilized in lead generation, although that's a little bit of incentivization and it might dilute the quality, but anything for sale could utilize customer referral programs. And, and these, these referral programs like this one by Friend Buy, they're very inexpensive, you know, $99 a month to run, to run a, a tool like this, all automated, is, you know, very effective. And it's another cloud-based, what they call a SaaS, SaaS product, software as a service. Um, so, a lot of the tools I've shown you are cloud-based products. And, you know, the e-commerce, the e modern e-commerce has, you know, created hundreds of companies that just build tools for, for websites and e-commerce, whether it's retargeting or email capture or referral programs or conversion optimization. There's many companies that give you like a little script you put on your website and all of a sudden you have this great functionality on your website for, for dirt cheap. And it's... It's revolutionized e-commerce, it really has. Um, so, you know, some of the um, tips regarding referral programs, and I list a couple of them here. Um, you know, put it everywhere. You know, put it in your follow-up emails, put it on your website, in your header. Email all your previous customers when you launch it. You know, make your referral program. Tell your customer service agents to mention it to your customers. You, know, you should weave it into the culture of your company and, and put it on the uh, high up on a pedestal because companies like Bonobos and other um, e-commerce sites, modern e-commerce sites, newer, um, you know, 
you, Bonobos gets 25% of their new revenue just from customer referrals. And the campaign cost is completely minimal. You know, it might be a couple hundred bucks a month for a big e-commerce site to run a widget like that, a referral widget. And, you know, doing millions of dollars in revenue, incremental revenue with no campaign cost, is just all profit. So it's a no-brainer. Um, let's talk about mobile a little bit. Um, well, actually, um, this, this is more of a retention slide. Um, and it, it sort of, you know, bleeds into the uh, affiliate space. Um, just discounts and promotions. And obviously, if you're in affiliate marketing, you know, you know about discounts and promotions and how important they are to get people moving and motivated to promote your company. But, um, you know, so th this slide kind of um, demonstrates that discounts and promotions will create a lot of loyalty with your customers. And over time, the ROI will be there. You may have to suck it up a little bit on the initial sale to uh, get them as a customer, but with emailing them and retargeting them and, and things of that nature. Um, and affiliate programs prosper when you run a lot of promotions and discounts through your, through your publishers, if, if you can do that. Obviously, lead gen, it wouldn't apply, but if you're selling something, then you know, just telling an affiliate, you know, promote us, here's the banner, here's the link, go to work, not effective. Here's a 10% off discount, here's a great deal, here's free shipping, whatever the case may be. That's going to, and you blast that to all your publishers, that's going to get a higher participation rate with that pr promotion. And if you do that you know, over and over again, you'll get a higher overall publisher participation rate and more traffic and sales over time if you run a lot of promotions through your affiliates. Um, so let's, let's talk about, um, you know, again, Facebook and, and just mobile. Uh, mobile, is, is, mobile is everything. Mobile is where it's at. Uh, mobile apps mobile ga gaming, running offers and games, rewards, things like that, having a mobile optimized website. Um, mobile, 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 mobile. I mean, if there's one thing you, I, I hope you or like you to leave this with, it's just mobile is everything, okay? The, the, the web is going away. It's all going to be on your phone, ultimately. And a little bit, it, it's kind of like, you know, they don't sell a lot of desktops now, they sell a lot of tablets and you know, in phones, and just desktops are going the way of the dinosaur. Kind of similar with the web. The web is kind of going away. You're, you're gonna have like grannies on their, on their you know, desktop at home, but everyone else is gonna be on their phone and laptop, and uh, tablet. Um, and, and so you, everything you do needs to be optimized for the mobile experience. That's the point of that. Um, Facebook is killing mobile right now. Um, and they're not even killing it like they will be killing it after this next the fourth quarter. But they're already getting more advertising from mobile than web. And they've, what, they've been doing it for like a year and a half, two years, um, as far as their mobile advertising uh, strategy. So you can, you know, this graphic just hammers home the point that mobile advertising is where it's at, mobile web is where it's at, um, developing apps, pushing out apps, apps are where it's at, Every, anything mobile, just, just do everything mobile that you can and try to transition from the web to mobile with it, whatever you, you know, all your landing pages, your lead gen, your CPA offers, they damn well better be mobile optimized because those people are looking at it on their phone more and more. And if, and if they can't experience it well on their phone, they're not gonna convert. That's the point of that. Um, and if they can, they can navigate it well on their phone and check out or fill out the lead form real easily, then they will convert and your conversion rates will go up. And, and as mobile has grown, Companies that aren't mobile have taken a dive. Um, and companies that are mobile have prospered from that. And you can see that bearing out in you know, search campaigns and things like that. Um, even when you're running keywords, uh, keywords to landing pages and websites, websites that are mobile optimized that are getting, you know, getting mobile traffic are converting well. And the, ones, and the websites that aren't mobile optimized, they don't convert well on that traffic for mobile users. So it, it kills conversion if you're not, if you don't have a mobile optimized website. Um, you know, resources to follow. Um, you know, these, these are just some websites and some resources that I follow um, in my daily routine. I wake up, I jump on the computer, I go on Facebook, I go on LinkedIn. And I, these are some of the companies that, you know, fan pages I follow and 
and things I'm being exposed to. And, and this is how I learn. This is, this is how I stay on the cutting edge, or at least try to stay on the cutting edge. Um, Mashable, you know, is, if you're, you're in a social media, you need to be following Mashable and reading it every day. It's just everything about social media and keep you on the cutting edge and world. They, you know, they mix in a lot of world stuff now, current events, stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not gonna bore you with, you know, explaining what each of these things are. You can access all this later, but these are just some good resources if you want to become a digital marketing expert or you want to just learn these practices and strategies a little a little better. These are some of the resources you need to follow. Um, yeah, I, I don't, again, I want to um, allow for some questions and things, but um, that's it. That's, that's all the slides I have. So any questions? Don't be shy now. I know you have questions. This always happens. Yes? Yeah. Can you serve different ads to, if you had your email list segmented by buyers and non-buyers, then yes. Right now they give you a script that you put in the HTML um, and when you blast it out there, it cookies, it cookies them. So you would have to set up two separate campaigns and just blast one, one email with that cookie to um, buyers and one to non-buyers, and then you could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I like the program. I've gone through the content. I know the people that you know, are marketing it actually. Um, I do some consulting with them. So I kind of threw it in there, you know, it's a couple grand, it's, you know, it's not cheap, but I'm for anything that's going to teach you some strategy and give you some more, clue you in to what bigger companies are doing with their social media strategy. So yeah, I think it's, I think it has value. Do I think it's, you know, a must? I mean, not necessarily. I mean, you can, you can learn all this stuff on your own. You know, you can, what, what I usually recommend is follow some of the bigger Facebook pages, um, like McDonald's and Coke and, you know, um, whatever it may be. Some of the bigger brands, they usually have teams of social media managers on their stuff and they run a lot of sweepstakes to increase likes and, and, and email opt-ins. They, they run a lot of ads, a lot of boosted posts. So if you follow some bigger corporate brands and see what they're doing, you can, you can do that for your company. You can say, oh, you know what? They're running a sweepstakes. Let's run a sweepstakes. You know, um, let's you know use WooBox or Wishpond or Rafflecopter. You know, there's wonderful tools for running sweepstakes. I'm a huge advocate of sweepstakes because nothing rockets your fans like sweepstakes. And it gets email opt-ins. You can run a sweepstakes. I'm surprised I didn't touch on it more, but because um, it's like my number one recommendation. But the nice thing about a sweepstakes is you can market it on the site, you can email people, you can promote it on your Facebook and Twitter, do boosted posts, and expose your sweepstakes to all types of people. And then when people enter your sweepstakes, they have to authorize their Facebook account to connect to it, which 80% do. And so their friends see it, and their friends may like the page, they may give you their email if they want to enter the sweepstakes. Running sweepstakes is part and parcel of a social media strategy. If you, if you have a social media strategy without running sweepstakes and contests, you don't have a social media strategy, as far as I'm concerned, because it's so effective and it's just, it's, it goes viral. It's, it's, it automatically goes viral if you use the right apps to, to power it. And the apps are cheap. You know, uh, Woobox is 49 bucks a month. Rafflecopter's like 20. Uh, Wishpond's a little, a little pricier, but um, uh, has more an analytics and more insight. And, you know, use these tools. You know, these tools are out there. And I list a lot of them in, in, in these notes that you can access. Um, I have, you know, some bit.ly links set up already. Um, those bit.ly links right there. But I can email it to you. And you can, I'm going to publish this online, yada, yada. And you can um, grab the content and the presentation slides after the fact and go to all these links that I've linked in, in, this, in this content here. But you can also go to my, you know, you can check my articles out at your leisure. Um, and these, a lot of these articles have, um, you know, tips for bloggers, tips for affiliates, tips for digital marketing, 
and I list all these different companies that I work with with clients and that I know are effective. So just by checking out the, the um, content, my articles and stuff, you'll, you'll get clued in. Well, call pay per call is great if you have a call center ready to sell to those people. If you don't, it's completely off the table. Um, I have a client that does reverse mortgages, and all they want are calls into their call center. They don't even want leads through a lead page. Um, they can do leads, but they prefer to just get calls and to pay per call. I, I think pay per call is great. I, I love it if you can get quality calls. The key is tracking the calls and you know not paying on the calls that aren't you know, appropriate or they're people not really interested. The problem with, with getting publishers for pay per call is you have to vet them really well and then you have to see if their calls are converting and if they're not, you have to get rid of them and, you know, take away their commissions and there's a management, there's a, a lot of management with running pay per call. Similar to running an affiliate program, you're not going to pay out on all the sales that come in or leads. They have to be, you know, you have to see what's, what's good and bad quality coming in through your affiliate channel and, and prune as, as needed um, and re reverse commissions as needed if, if it's not you know a valid order or a valid lead. And the same management issues with running an affiliate program come into a paper call program. They're just separate platforms that you're running it on. Um, but I, I do think it's, it's you know, I have, I have a, a, a contact that buys media. They buy radio ads, TV ads. Um, like when you're watching, uh, you know, Maury Povich or Jerry Springer or whatever, this is just his placement. Um, bad example, but um, they say, you know, you want to talk to Maury and give him your feedback? Call this number. And then when, they, when the people call the number, they take you through a series of questions. Do you need an alarm system? Do you need uh, to consolidate your student loans? Do you need this? Do you need that? Press one for this, press two for that. And then when they press those buttons, it transfers the call to their paper call buyers into their call center and they bill them per call. So there's many, that's a performance marketing play. Um, it's just completely offline. It doesn't touch the web like a regular affiliate would. It's, it's buying traditional media and converting it into the call center and doing it on a performance basis. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of upside with pay per call with the right relationship. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Come on now, I, I know you have more questions. I don't believe you. Um, we have we have a couple more minutes. I don't want to I don't want to stop now. Um, let me let me show you how I do my LinkedIn thing, um, real quick, because a lot of people don't utilize LinkedIn. This comes up over and over again. I don't. I'm on LinkedIn, but I don't really know how to leverage it. So w when I you know when I log into LinkedIn in the morning. Um, I, I scroll through and these are articles they're pushing in my face that are in my industry. So that keeps me on the cutting edge. Um, then people, you know, people, um, you know, got in, this guy got a new job. I'll like it. You know, the thing with, with social networking and just leveraging these net, then I'll come over here and I'll look at, you know, see, I have, I have a lot of connections. I have over 10,000 LinkedIn connections because I've been working it for years. Um, and, you don't need 10,000 LinkedIn connections. Believe me, I have too many connections. I can't even work them all. But, you know, I'm just a social networking fool, so I have that many. But um, the cool thing, this is a cool part of LinkedIn. This shows you the people that viewed your LinkedIn profile. Um, and this, this is very valuable because you can reach out to these people. Um, and, you know, it shows you if you're a connection or not with the, with, with the people that have viewed your profile. So I can scroll through this and see, oh, who are these people? You know, am I connected to them? Am I not? I can shoot them a connection. I can shoot them a message and say, hey, I saw you were on my profile. What's up? What can I help you with? Um, what can I do for you? And, you know, the more content you post on LinkedIn, the more people will view your profile. And if you vote view people's profile, they might come into this tool to see um, who, who viewed their profile, see you view your profile. So the more you use LinkedIn, the more it kind of snowballs on top of itself. Um, I don't really use the job stuff, although 
LinkedIn is great for finding new jobs and finding talent to fill your roles and things. But, um, you know, I, I'm a big believer in, in just being a proactive social networker, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or Instagram, you know, be proactive with your social networking. Um, the more the more you interact with people's stuff, like, comment, share, retweet, the more they'll do it to your stuff and more people will see your stuff. Um, and I call that social karma, building up your social karma. Like when I post something on Facebook or, or LinkedIn, I get likes, I get comments because I'm doing that to other people's stuff. And you know, you'll notice if you post something on Facebook or, or whatever, you know, you might get one like, two likes. When I post something, I get like 10 likes. And, you know, I have a few thousand friends or whatever on Facebook. Um, but the reason I get more likes is, is because I, I interact with other people's postings. And I'm not, you know, liking their baby photos or their, you know, we went to Disney World necessarily. But business-related stuff, um, you know, congratulations, that looked fun, whatever, whatever. You know, just go about it genuinely with a positive energy and um, really you know, put a lot into your social networking, especially LinkedIn, like the people, the people, and use their, use their connection tools. Um, LinkedIn has really powerful connection tools. LinkedIn, you can actually connect your entire email account to LinkedIn, and then it'll send them all an invite, all the people that are on LinkedIn. And the people not on LinkedIn, it'll send them an invite saying they need to join LinkedIn. So it's really a powerful way to use mass invites to grow your, your LinkedIn connections big time. Yeah. Um, so I know Facebook's algorithm has kind of been changed a lot because these business pages were, you know, first time were working for blogs. Um, we're having a, lot, a hard time because we're not reaching all of our audience. Right. Yeah, well, image, image posts with images get more interaction. It takes up more real estate in the newsfeed, but you know that's how Facebook makes their money. They charge you to boost the post, and and boosted posts work really well. Um, I hear a lot of people saying, "Oh, I hate Facebook because no one sees my posts," you know, on my company page. Well, cry me a river. You know what I mean? Spend the ten dollars. Spend the twenty dollars. Boosted posts don't cost a lot. Um, and what the nice thing is when they first rolled it out, it would just go to the friends. I mean the fans. Now it goes to the fans and their friends. So if you have a Facebook page with a bunch of, you know, 20 to 30 year olds, um, you know, and they have a lot of friends that are the same age, your boosted posts will go to the, fr the friends as well. And those people will like the page. So it boosts page likes when you do a boosted post and gets more clicks and comments. Uh, the other thing is you can also boost the post to just a targeted adver advertisement, like age and people into gardening, let's say. And it'll go to all non-fans, and it'll, it'll boost the post to all non-fans. Uh, and that, what that does is it gets more page likes and, and click-throughs as well if you're linking to a site. So boosted posts are definitely the thing to do. You, you need to have like a budget. If you, if, definitely if you run a sweepstakes or you have something like a promotion for your company, like we're running a deal, and you don't boost the post, you might as well not even do it. Seriously, I mean, it's going to get no play at all. If you boost the post, you'll be pleasantly surprised with the results. Um, you'll get more page likes. You'll get a lot of click-throughs, likes, comments. You'll get everything you wanted from the post if you boost it. If you don't boost it, don't expect anything but one or two likes. Boosted posts are absolutely where it's at with, with, you know, exposing the post to the fans and their friends. And then you can also, like I said, do a boosted post to non-fans, but by t with targeting, targeting the boosted post. And that, that brings up your page likes because they'll like the page if they see something they're not liked to yet in their news feed and stuff like that. Um, any other questions? That's about it. I think we're, it's, we're out of time and... I don't want to piss off anyone in Affiliate Summit staff. So that's it, everyone. Thank you for attending. Thank you.